Hey, how's it going? Hope everyone's enjoying their Halloween season so far. Today we're going to start a piece based on another Halloween legend, but this isn't a legend about a person or a monster like Stingy Jack. This is more of a concept, and that is the urban legend of poison candy and razor blades and apples during Halloween. So, I have a preliminary image uh, I worked up earlier, and what we have here, uh, we have a very, uh, very shady, very obviously dangerous apple being offered to some poor trick-or-treaters. So we have some razor blades and poisonous spiders and even a syringe full of poison just sticking right in the apple. And these trick-or-treaters are very suspicious, as they should be. And this axe is just sort of a very rough preliminary sketch for the final piece. It's very loosely composited together, and I do a little experimentation with color and lighting and composition, but it just acts as sort of a blueprint for the final piece. So, speaking of, let's get started on the final piece. We're going to start with this image here. We're going to start with the old woman's hand. I think between the two of these, I'm going to go with this one. I'm just going to get my pen tool and I'm going to make a pat. And all these little wrinkle details are kind of a pain to cut out, but it's all good. All right, so we got our path done. So let's make that selection. All right, so let's make a new document. And we'll call that poison candy even though it's an apple so it's not really candy but I don't think it matters and like I always do I'm just gonna fill in the background with like a neutral grayish blue so let's paste in our hand and I want to flip that so it's her, her right hand and that's gonna be right about there all right, so let's get our apple in next. So I have some uh, caramel apple pictures here. And let's start off with this one. And I don't need the entire apple, so I'm just going to get about half of it right about there. So let's select that and paste that in. Let's rotate that this way. And I'm going to flip that horizontally because I think the lighting matches the hand a little better this way. And I'm just going to line up the stem where the fork was. So right about there. And let's put the apple in a group. And just call that apple. And I'm going to put a mask on that. And I'm just going to mask off the stick up until the thumb. So let's zoom in so I can get a better mask. All right, so now let's get the rest of the apple. So I got this image for the stem, for like the handle stick part, but I think I like these apples better. They're a little more, uh, they're covered in, in more uh, caramel. And I think they look nicer. Let's uh, grab this one next. Let's use this one for uh, the rest of the apple. So let's start clipping this out.
And I don't need the stick for this one because we're going to use the stick for the other one. So I can just cut right over that. But let's select that. And let's paste that in here. And I think we're going to flip that horizontal. Alright, so let's blend this apple in with the other apple. I'm just going to put a mask on that top apple. And I'm just going to start fading that off so it blends in with the bottom apple. And let's label that and call it hand. And that's probably going to be right around there. I'm going to guess. All right. So before we start to add in all the razor blades and the syringe and all that fun stuff, I'm going to start to lay in the kids because where the kids end up being is going to sort of dictate where those blades stick out because I don't want the blades to overlap the kids faces. So I'm going to put the kids in first. So let's grab our first kid image. And uh, I love his face, it's great. So let's cut him out with our pen tool. And let's just get a little bit of the neck. We shouldn't need too much of the neck, but let's just get a nice section. So we have some to work with later. And I'm just going to very roughly path out his hair. We'll get a better selection with the channels in just a bit. All right, so we got them all pathed out. So let's select that. All right, so we got his head mostly cut out here, but we need to get all his little hairs here. So we're just going to take our lasso and select roughly the hair area. We're going to copy and paste that in. And I'm going to go to my channels and just pick the channel with the most contrast. All right, so it looks like it's our blue channel. So let's duplicate our blue channel. Let's go to our levels and just turn up our blacks, turn up our whites. And that looks like that should be good. So let's select that. And gonna to have to inverse that because it selects the white. Now let's copy and paste that. And let's just do a fill layer so we can see what our selection looks like. That looks pretty good. So let's group that and just call it head. And I'm just gonna drag those into our file. I'm gonna position him right around there. All right, so now let's get his body or his upper body. And I got these two devil costume pictures. So let's start off with this one here. And we'll just get a rough selection down here. And I think I'm going to end up using a different arm. So I'm just going to end it right about there. All right, so let's select that. And let's bring that in here. And you know what? Let's just turn off our apple layer for now. And I'll just move him to the center. That'll just make it easier to work on him. All right, so let's grab uh, this arm next. And I'm going to use this picture for the arm because here it's tucked back a little more and I think that will just work with the composition of our picture a little better. And we got to get this 
Pitchfork too, of course. And I don't know if I want this like long sash thing, so I think I'm just going to clip around it and just get rid of it later. All right, so let's select that. Bring that in here. And I'm just gonna call that arm. And we're gonna stick it behind our body layer. Let's see, let's zoom out a little bit so we can get a better perspective on how it all lines up. Maybe in front of our body? Yeah, that actually might work better. Our perspective is going to be uh, very exaggerated, so it's almost going to look like a, a fisheye lens. So his head's going to be extra big in comparison to his body. I actually might want to distort this and put a little artificial perspective on that. Not too much, just a hint of it. And luckily, the skin tone of that girl is very similar to his, so we don't have to worry about matching skin tones. Alright, so let's put a, a mask on his head. And let's see if we can't fade his, his head into her neck. So I'm going to warp his neck a little bit just to get that faked out perspective. But I think I'm also going to need to liquefy her neck so they both line up nicely. So let's go to our body layer and let's go to liquefy. And let's just get these two to line up nicely. So that neck goes into that neck. And I think I'm just going to mask this part of his neck off completely. Okay. That cartoonist perspective is really going to help, uh, like, the comical vibe of the overall piece. But uh, her neck skin doesn't quite match his neck skin, so I'm going to need to match those up better. And I think if I just do a hue saturation adjustment, that might be enough. Let's try lightening up her body too a little bit. All right, now we're getting there. Okay, that's pretty close. But I don't know if I want the entire body that light, so I am going to mask that off down here and just keep that adjustment on the neck. So I'm going to go back in here and paint with white. So that adjustment is only applied to our neck. Alright, so let's add in the bottom of his costume. And for that, I'm going to use this section right there. And I'm not going to clip out his shoes. I'm going to use a different picture for his shoes. So I think that should probably be enough right there. And so let's bring this in. And want to put that at the bottom so it's behind our body layer. And I'm going to warp it just to make the bottom a little more round to fit with our perspective. All right, that should be good. So let's put a mask on our body layer. And we're just going to fade these two sections together. All right, so let's zoom out and see how that looks. So uh, let's put his shoes in. 
So I got some nice red converse to go along with his devil costume. All right, let's get our other shoe. And we'll paste those in below the robe. See, right about there looks good. Let's zoom out and see how our perspective is looking. You know, I think the bottom of his robe can be made a little bit smaller. I think that'll help our exaggerated perspective if I just bring it up more like that. So let's warp it to line that up. Let's move our shoes back. Yeah, I think that works good. All right, so I need to get rid of this little bit of hair we have there. So let's go back to this picture here. Her hair isn't really covering up her shoulder as much in this picture. So let's grab this section here. So let's paste that over the body layer. I'm going to need to lighten that up a little bit. All right, so let's warp that so it all lines up and put a mask on that. All right, cool. And for over here, you know what? Let's try a different technique. Let's just make a new layer, clip to that layer, and let's just paint it out. That might just be a simpler, easier way of doing this. And let's add a little bit of noise to that. Like two is probably enough. And just blur that out a little bit, just to give it some texture. All right, so we covered up the hair on the shoulders with two different techniques. And I think maybe painting it out was just the easier way to go in retrospective. All right, so let's add one more thing to this, uh, this child. And then we can move on to the next one. And I'm just going to give him a Halloween trick-or-treat bucket. I'm just going to paste that in. And that's just going to be right about there around his waist. And again, I don't think you're going to see this arm. I think this arm is going to be covered up by the apple. Let's just go back to our preliminary image. Like, yeah, like that entire side of his body is going to be covered up. So. We don't need to worry about this arm at all. So I'm gonna put the bucket right around there. I'll just call that bucket. And then I'm gonna take all those layers for that kid and I'm just gonna put them into one group. And we'll call that uh, child, child number one. So we'll move him over here for now. And now let's bring in our second kid. So again, let's start with the face. And that's a pretty funny face. Uh, it's not quite as funny as the last kid, but uh, it's pretty funny. So let's use our pen tool and let's start cutting them out. Again, we're just going to take a little sample of the neck. We don't need very much of it. And let's select that.
And so we got most of his head, but again, we need to get all the little wisps of hair. So I'm just going to take the lasso tool and just roughly cut out where the hair is. Copy and paste that. Then go into my channels. Use our blue channel. And I'm just going to up the darks and up the lights. And that should be good. So I'm going to select that. Go to inverse. Copy and paste that. Just do a fill layer again so I can see how my selection turned out. That looks pretty good. So we're going to group that. I'm going to call that head. And I'm just going to drag that in here. And I'm going to flip that. And he's going to be about like that. And let's just turn off the first kid for now and just work on this kid. So he's going to be a vampire and we're going to take uh, most of this picture, except for the head. And we're just going to clip out to the candy bucket. Um, I'm going to give him a different set of legs. And I'm just going to chop his head totally off because we don't want it. Copy it. Bring that in here. And we'll just scale it down a little bit. Right about like that. All right, so let's uh, mask off his head so we can blend in the neck. And I think we can just mask off this entire section of the neck right here, so. And I'm gonna get rid of this part completely. All right, so I'm seeing some of this kid's chin underneath again. I'm just going to paint that chin out. So I'm gonna take a sample from the neck. And I'm just going to... Let me turn my opacity down first, and I'm just gonna paint out that neck. And then I can kind of paint in the neck over here so it blends together with our head picture. Alright, I think that's pretty good. But let's um let's compare this proportions with the other child. Because I just want to make sure that they're both at the same basic proportions. I want a nice exaggerated like fisheye perspective, but I want to make sure the kids are both pretty consistent. And it looks like I might need to scale this one down a little bit. All right, I think those two match pretty good. So let's turn that kid back off. And if you remember from our preliminary image, this kid's gonna be sort of reaching for the apple. So I don't want this arm here. All right, so I'm gonna go back to this picture here where we grabbed our candy bucket and the bottom of the robe. And I'm just gonna grab a little bit of the side of this uh, like cauldron bucket. So I think that should be plenty. All right, so we'll select that. And I'm going to paste that in and flip that. And I should be able to use this picture to 
cover up the edge of that picture. And I'm just going to warp it so it roughly lines up with the other bucket. So let's just mask off this section for now. And for now, I'm just going to make a new layer over his body. And I'm just going to roughly paint out this hand. I may or may not need to get another photo reference to cover it up, but for now, I'm just going to paint it out and that might be enough. And let's turn that opacity down so we can get a nice smooth transition here. Alright, so next let's give him his legs and feet. And I'm going to use this picture right here. And you might not even see this leg in the final picture, but let's just cut it out anyway. Just in case you do. And let's paste those in. And you're not going to see very much of them, just a little bit right down there. So I'm just going to do a color overlay, just to get his pants straight up black. And I'll just paint with black in here, just to darken that whole area up. Let's put that kid in a group, and we'll call that child number two. And let's turn that first kid back on. And let's turn back on our apple in the hand. And we'll put those up front. And put them in their own group. Let's just kind of get the rough composition here. So he's going to be like right there. And he's going to be right about there. I want to be able to see some of his... his uh, trident. So I don't want that to be totally cut off. Yeah, and you can barely see that bucket, so maybe... We might not even need the bucket, but... I think it's a fun detail to have in, so we can just stick it like right there for now. Let's see, let's go back to our preliminary image. I think we had the kids a little bit smaller. That's why it's good to work out this beforehand, because it'll help things out later on. So let's scale both those kids down a little bit. Alright, so I think that's a good stopping place. We got most of our kids laid out. We have our hand with our apple, and in the next video, we'll start adding in all the fun details of the blades and the bugs and the syringe going into the apple. But that's going to be it for this video. Thank you for watching and take care.